could be one of Jericho's missing paintings. Théodore Jericho came to fame for his Raft of the Medusa, which depicted the aftermath of the wreckage of the French naval ship the Meduse. Unfortunately, his fame was short-lived, as he passed away in 1824 at the age of 32 because he developed health issues from a series of writing accidents. Now, as a bookend to his life and his career, Jericho was allegedly commissioned to paint portraits of asylum patients by French physician Etienne Jean Georget. And I say allegedly because the circumstances of why these portraits came about are very obscure. It's actually unclear how Jericho and Georget became acquainted. One possibility is that Georget suffered a mental breakdown in 1819, after which he required psychiatric care. Which which was supposedly provided by Georgette. These paintings could therefore be a show of thanks to Georgette. Another alternative is that Jericho engaged in art therapy and therefore completed these portraits as part of his care. However, the most likely outcome is that Georges commissioned these paintings to further his own inquiries into physiognomy. Physiognomy was the idea that studying facial expressions could help diagnose mental illness. Although now a discredited science or pseudoscience, physiognomy was endorsed by many 19th century physicians, especially those that we would consider early psychiatrists. These physicians would commission drawings, paintings, and eventually photographs to facilitate physiognomic studies of mental illnesses, such as monomania. Now, it was Jean-Étienne Esquirol, who was the mentor of Georgette, who first described monomania, and he described it as a form of partial insanity, where the patient was fixated or obsessed with a certain person, behavior, idea, or object. In Esquirol's eyes, monomania meant that the patient's mind was partly sound and partly unsound or insane. As a student of Esquirol's, Georgette was also interested in this idea of monomania, and he believed that the physician, that is, this early psychiatrist, had the necessary expertise to distinguish between someone who a monomaniac and someone who is sane or normal. And this would be incredibly important in courtroom cases where a determination of insanity needed to be made. And this could very well be why Georgette asked Jericho to paint these paintings. These portraits were opportunities to study monomania as well as other contemporary forms of mental illness and also legitimize this new science of physiognomy, which was part of the evolving field of psychiatry. They could have also been useful in helping establish the role of a physician or a psychiatrist in courtroom proceedings, pointing to this idea of an early forensic psychiatry. Jericho was supposed to have completed 10 of these portraits, but only five of them remain. Of these five surviving portraits, three are of men, while two are of women. The three men likely came from the Bicetre and the Charenton Parisian asylums, while the women came from the Salpêtrière. Unfortunately, we don't know much about these patients or these sitters. We don't know their names or their stories. All we know about them is the existence of these portraits, as well as the titles which should correspond to each patient's diagnosis. Here's another part of the mystery. It wasn't Chirico or Georgette who actually provided the titles for these paintings. Louis Viardot, who was an artist and a painter in the mid-19th century, discovered these paintings in an attic or a penthouse of one of Dr. Georgette's pupils, Dr. Lachaise. And it was then an art critic and biographer of Jericho, Clément, who actually provided these titles. The only indication that five other portraits exist stem from one of Viardot's letters, where he describes that that another pupil of Georgette, Dr. Maréchal, had the remaining five portraits. But before we get into that part of the mystery, let's take a closer look at these images. You could say at first glance that these sitters appeared objectified and silenced, and while I would agree to a point, I also think that they are less sensationalized representations of mental illness, especially compared to contemporary physiognomic portraits. I believe that they are also more representative of the sitter as an individual rather than a type of mental illness. It's also not obvious that these sitters are asylum patients. There's nothing in the background to indicate that they were sitting in an institution. They're also not wearing typical asylum uniform. Now in 2021, the mystery began to unravel with the potential discovery of a sixth portrait in a private collection in Italy. This image shows a man in a red robe. His eyes are downcast. He appears despondent. He has a furrowed brow, suggestive of melancholy. Again, we don't have a title for this painting that comes from Jericho or Georges or any other one of the 19th century historians that I mentioned. For now, this painting is referred to as the Melancholic Man. Now, I'm not entirely sure that melancholy would have qualified as a monomania. That said, it was still a common cause or type of mental illness in the early 19th century. Last year, in 2022, another portrait was discovered, that of a man with the monomania of drunkenness. Now, while drinking could induce mental illness, drunkenness was taken to be a sign of an underlying pathology like monomania. And in these episodes, the patient would be fixated on getting drunk. This 
painting is more convincingly Géricault's compared to the melancholic man because there was a label found on the back. This portrait of an insane man painted by Géricault was given to me by the widow of D. Maréchal in 1866. And remember that Maréchal was the other of Jean Jette's pupils who apparently had these other five paintings in his possession. This label has also been dated back to the mid-19th century, so this would fit in with the whole story. Now the same researcher, Dr. Borgos, who identified the melancholic man in 2021, as well as monomania of drunkenness in 2022, potentially identified a third portrait, and this would be the man from Bondé. However, this is not the first time that this particular portrait was thought to be Géricault's. This suspicion actually stems back to the 1930s. The diagnosis in this gentleman's case is monomania caused by political strife, and specifically strife that occurred in France between 1793 and 1796 in the region of Vendée. As in the case of the other two portraits, Dr. Borgos substantiated his claims of this being one of Géricault's missing paintings by drawing from medical writings of Esquirol and Georgette. Even though I made this video as a way of starting to unravel this mystery, I'm still left with many questions. Where are the other two portraits and who do they represent? Can we actually attribute these three portraits to Géricault? If you're interested in learning more about the history of psychiatry and medicine, as well as how these themes are represented in art, give this channel a follow and see you in the next video.